Morning everyone, your morning weather briefing for this Friday, April 27th uh, shows that there are no major changes in the forecast this morning. Still looking at a significant rainfall event for the opening days of May in the Corn Belt. A widespread uh, significant rainfall likely across a good portion of the region. Uh, Mid-South and Southeast are going to be seeing some dry weather for the next six days before rainfall returns to mainly the Mid-South for the end of next week. The Southeast will probably see very little rainfall for the entire 10-day period. I have added some rainfall chances to the hard red winter wheat belt forecast uh, uh, for next week. Uh, some chances there by Sunday and continue through as late as Thursday of next week, but it is still not a favorable situation for a lot of rainfall on those western areas, even though there are additional chances in the forecast today. And the storm system for next week is still not looking to do a whole lot as far as big rainfall amounts in the northern plains. Uh, six to ten day temperature and rainfall forecast this morning not a whole lot to mention here uh, what I will point out though is a lot better confidence today in the uh, 11 to 15 day uh, temperature forecast versus what I had yesterday the GFS uh, ensemble has really given up on the big rains that it had in yesterday's 11 to 15 day forecast for the southern plains and has uh, reverted more towards the uh, European ensemble for uh, generally below normal rainfall in the 11 to 15 day period across a, a big portion of the nation's midsection would be just modestly below normal. We're not talking about completely dry weather, but uh, modestly below normal amounts. But there would still be some rain across a good portion of the nation's midsection in the 11 to 15 day time frame. QPF discussion this morning, no major disagreements on my part with what is shown here. Uh, the bulk of the rainfall shown in this map is for the second half of this uh, uh, five-day time frame with the bulk of the nation's midsection being dry uh, for today through a good portion of Sunday before we start to see some widely scattered uh, thunderstorms possible in western portions of the hard red winter wheat belt on Sunday and Monday and then advancing a little bit further eastward from there on Tuesday and some of that rain uh, getting into western and northwestern portions into the Corn Belt and into the Northern Plains by the time we get to especially late Monday and into Tuesday as well. Uh, then the uh, storm system really takes shape as we get towards the Wednesday-Thursday time frame and rainfall will actually uh, still be occurring in uh, portions of the uh, southeastern Corn Belt and Mid-South even on day eight. Uh, I don't think that you really want to focus on the details of this map. I think that it is going to be changing quite a bit uh, as we get closer and closer to the uh, time frame in question. But for now, this is a good, accurate uh, representation of uh, the likelihood of what type of rainfall we are going to be seeing for the Wednesday, Thursday time frame of next week. High temperatures yesterday uh, saw some cool conditions across a good portion of the uh, Mid-South and Southeast as uh, uh, rainfall was uh, fairly uh, widespread in that area yesterday. Temperatures there in some places running more than 10 degrees above normal, otherwise fairly close to normal temperatures across a good portion of the Corn Belt and the Plain States yesterday. 18-hour precipitation totals through 1 a.m. this morning. Obviously the 1.36 uh, total at Memphis really stands out, but otherwise mainly just some quarter to three-quarter inch rainfall amounts uh, uh, through that time frame, and that matches up pretty nicely with the radar estimated rainfall. Uh, you know, again, you had some, some big rains in the the Memphis area more than an inch, but otherwise you know, plenty of a quarter to three quarter inch rainfall amounts across the rest of the Mid-South and the Southeast. Uh, getting into forecast details, first thing I want to point out is some chilly weather that is going to be seen across a sizable portion of the nation's midsection for especially the weekend period. Uh, what I'm showing here is temperature anomalies uh, for Sunday, and you can see that a big portion of the eastern Corn Belt is going to be seeing temperatures more uh, than 10 degrees below normal, and that is going to be representing some sub-freezing temperatures across a good portion of the area on Sunday morning. Already tomorrow morning, we are going to be seeing some uh, sub-freezing temperatures in eastern Minnesota. Minnesota and into Wisconsin. Uh, you can see though that uh, warmer areas starting to move into uh, the Plain States and into the far western Corn Belt on Sunday and that warmth uh, really envelops uh, a bigger portion of the nation's midsection as we get towards uh, the Wednesday time frame and looking at high temperatures that day you can see that we are going to be seeing some 90s in uh, portions of the hard red winter wheat belt on Wednesday and look at the extensive 70s and 80s across uh, the rest of the nation's midsection but uh, 
behind that is some cooler air that is going to be dropping in. So the warm-up that we are going to be seeing is pretty brief in nature, uh, near to below normal temperatures again being seen across a good portion of the nation's midsection uh, for later on next week and into the 11 to 15 day time frame. It doesn't look like anything real extreme as far as cool weather is concerned. But again, just noting that the warm-up that we are going to be seeing fairly brief in nature before temperatures are crossed a big portion of the middle of the country reverting back to near to below normal levels especially as we get towards late next week and beyond. I also want to mention some big winds that are going to be seen again uh, for about Sunday through Wednesday of next week in the uh, hard red winter wheat belt. Uh, this is uh, on the left is the GFS surface features from uh, late on Monday and this is the European ensemble European models uh, forecast of, uh, of wind gusts during the day uh, late on Monday. You can see from the tight gradient of the isobars in the southern plains uh, that that's why we are going to be seeing those big winds and you can see from the map on the right uh, the model indicates some areas of uh, wind gusts in uh, excess of 40 or even 45 miles per hour and in general I think that it's probably underdoing things I would not be surprised at all to see some wind gusts on muddy in excess of 50 miles per hour in the hard red winter wheat belt but again noting that conditions there will also be windy on Sunday as well as on Tuesday and Wednesday as well. Now regarding the additional precipitation chances that I have in the forecast for the hard red winter wheat belt today, uh, showing on the left is the uh, surface features from the European model for late Sunday and on the right is surface features for late Monday. And it's because of the development of a dry line that we are going to be seeing some thunderstorm chances in western portions of the hard red winter wheat belt on both days. If you follow my cursor there you can see that right about there is the dry line for late Sunday. And right about there is your dry line for late on Monday. So just a slight eastward advancement of the dry line on both days. Dry line is basically a demarcation line between some very dry air coming out of the southwest and somewhat uh, more moist air that is developing uh, and moving into the region from the Gulf of Mexico. And you can typically see some thunderstorm development ahead of uh, the dry line uh, region. What we're going to be seeing on both days, in my opinion, is the development of some isolated to widely scattered thunderstorm activity. And you can see the European model trying to indicate some of that activity for both Sunday afternoon and Monday afternoon. With with the activity then dying off fairly quickly during the nighttime hours. European model is probably underdoing actual rainfall amounts that are going to be seen on a localized basis as we are going to be seeing some severe weather on both days and if a place gets under those uh, stronger or more severe storms they can get a pretty decent rainfall amount. Overall, though, I think that the coverage of this activity is going to be extremely limited. So while we may see some localized spots that get under a strong or severe thunderstorm get a good rain, the vast majority of the area is going to miss out. And even on those days, I think that the vast majority in the west is going to be seeing very little in the way of rainfall. As we head towards Tuesday and Wednesday, let's draw the dry line once again. There it is for uh, Tuesday. And there it is for about Wednesday so you can see that it is continuing to advance further and further eastward and the thunderstorm activity advances a little bit further eastward each day as well. With regards to the western areas, probably their best chance for rainfall is going to be for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. But again, very isolated in nature, only spotty locations getting any bigger amounts with a lot of the area probably getting little or nothing. And then as we get towards Thursday, you can see that everything is advanced uh, well eastward from the hard red wheat, winter wheat belt so that by Thursday, uh, the bulk of the activity is uh, to the east of the uh, main growing area. So again, bottom line in today's forecast, I think that there are more chances uh, in the winter wheat belt could be a daily threat of rainfall there for some portion of the region for Sunday right through Thursday but again I'm really no more optimistic today than I was yesterday about the chances for any real good solid coverage rains in especially western portions of the region. Uh, there is going to be like I said a lot of severe weather at the activity. Here's uh, from the Storm Prediction Center their outlook for a marginal risk of severe weather on Sunday ahead of the dry line. There's Monday and you can see that each day the threat advances further eastward so that by the time we get to Tuesday and Wednesday the main threat of rainfall of uh, thunderstorm activity anyway is largely to the east of the main winter wheat areas in western portions of the plains. Uh, total rainfall for uh, next 10 days shown from the European Ensemble on the left as uh, and then you can see where we've had the rainfall so far this month and what I want to point out is the areas that are going to benefit and those areas that really don't want the rainfall next week. Obviously a situation 
right about here in the southeastern Corn Belt through a good portion of the Mid-South. You know, that's an area that obviously has been wet this month and is very wet at this point. At least that area is going to be seeing about six days of dry weather, but then rainfall after that, clearly unwelcome again. Another area where the rainfall is going to be unwelcome, obviously in the northwestern portions of the Corn Belt, where they had all of that big snow later uh, earlier on this month, and they're still trying to dry out. So that rainfall there, clearly not beneficial. Anything that can fall, obviously, in the southern plains, you know, very beneficial. What they can get, again, not real excited about the western area. What I really wanted to point out, though, was this area that I'm kind of scrolling in right here. Certainly the rainfall that is going to be seen next week is going to be stopping planning progress activities in that area. But let's keep in mind that they've been doing a whole lot as of late. They're going to be seeing more extensive uh, fieldwork activities activities in that same area for another two to three days and then let's look on the right here that a lot of that area has clearly not seen big rainfall so far in this month of April. In my opinion you have to consider all of the rainfall that is going to be occurring next week in southern Iowa, in northern Missouri, in northwestern Illinois, in eastern Nebraska as highly beneficial as that area has gotten a lot of field work done so far and they are quite dry right now. So pretty rare to see big rainfall in April as a benefit to any portion of the Corn Belt, but I certainly think that that is the case in the areas that I've circled on the map to the right. Finally, this morning, with regards to U.S. weather, pointing out that we do have a lot more confidence today in the 11 to 15 day rainfall forecast. Uh, GFS Ensemble has really backed off on the uh, big rains that it showed in the yesterday's 11 to 15 day forecast for the Southern Plains. Models in a lot better agreement that uh, for the 11 to 15 day time frame, maybe not totally dry, but a big portion of the nation looking at below normal amounts in that time frame. Overseas, still a uh, weather pattern for the next uh, two weeks that is going to be featuring widespread below normal rainfall in the Safrina corn areas of Brazil. Uh, even with that being the case, we are still looking at some modest rains developing, especially in the 11 to 15 day time frame for some of the southern growing areas into Mato Grosso do Sul and a portion of Parana. Overall, your driest portion of the Safrina area over the next two weeks in Brazil is going to be in Goiás, where rainfall there over the next two weeks staying well below a half inch. Obviously still a situation in Argentina where they're looking at well above normal rainfall during the next two weeks. A bulk of that rainfall though during the next 10 days before any big rains move off to their northeast in the 11 to 15 day time. Some of that heavy rainfall in Argentina already occurring this weekend when there should be a lot of one to two inch rainfall amounts. Uh, looking at this map here you're probably going where in the heck is this in the world? Where well, this is actually the uh, spring wheat areas of the former Soviet Union. Uh, you might be able to recognize that there's Kazakhstan right there and then there's a bigger portion of Russia. Basically this map is indicating a bigger portion of the spring wheat areas of the former Soviet Union and you can see that uh, there are going to be some fairly significant rains across a big portion of that area during the next 10 days. Uh, temperatures there are rather chilly especially during the second week of the two-week forecast. Kind of wondering out loud whether this might be promoting some possible uh, planning delays in uh, portions of the spring wheat areas of Russia. I've heard some uh, modest stories about some planning delays in that area because of all the snow cover that had to melt off during uh, the from the winter time period. Uh, if that is indeed the case, I don't think that uh, spring planting efforts there are going to be uh, picking up any time too soon given the uh, type of rainfall that's in the 10-day forecast and some fairly chilly conditions coming up for the 11 to 15 day period as well. That's what I have for you this morning. Everyone have themselves a great day and a great weekend.